Hey there, this is Sam Daly, and I'm here with Chris Gordon talking on Hellblazer. Hey everyone, I have the honor and the privilege of the company of Sam Daly. And hi again, Sam. Thanks for having me, Chris. You're welcome. I do appreciate you coming on. Uh, as you know, we've got some few questions for you, uh, which we'll uh, try and delve some answers and find out about a bit more about yourself, where you've been, and uh, and hopefully a few chuckles along the way. I think we've already had a oh, few, so... <laughs> Let's here we go. Excellent. Oh, I noticed that Stanley Kubrick right there. Isn't that the greatest thing you've ever seen? That is actually a really, really awesome T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you can't got me that shirt. I was into it. Yeah. One of the greatest directors I know of, actually. I was just watching Full Metal Jacket again the other night. Amazing movie. Yeah, it is. It's uh, very powerful. Just love that uh, private. I always think myself, I'll be like, obviously not towards the end, but like Private Pile going through the exercises, that's kind of me. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> no, come on, you're better than that. You can make it. I have faith in you. <laughs> yeah, I just wouldn't do the end bit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a fantastic movie. Cool. Anyway, so. Yeah, as we know, we're here to talk about you and get to know you a bit better, and hopefully have some people listening in and watching this will be uh, delve deeper into the life of Sam Daly. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Cool. So when you were younger, is this, I mean, obviously I know your background and I've got a few questions which obviously follow on from here, so is this, when you were younger, is this what you wanted to be? Did I want to be an actor? No, no, no. I wanted to be, I thought my, so, you know, I grew up around a lot of actors, but both of my parents were actors. Mm -hmm. uh, my aunt, Tyne Daly, is a very yes. famous actress and, you know, celebrated. My, both of my dad's parents, my grandmother and grandfather, were actors. Uh, wow. My dad's dad passed away before my dad even met my mom, um, mm -hmm. but he was an Emmy Award winning actor. He was in 20 some Broadway plays. He was on a big hit CBS show in the 70s called Medical Center. Mm -hmm. uh, and he tragically died of a heart attack the night before him and my dad were supposed to start rehearsals for the play Equus when my dad was 19 in New York. Oh, right. uh, his mother, my grandma Hopi, Rest in peace also, who was just my favorite grandparent. She was, you know, if if you had never, if you had met her for your first time, you'd, you'd be pretty confident that she was an actress within five minutes of meeting her, I would say. She, she was a very <laughs> um, sort of over-the-top uh, character. You know, she had this long braided ponytail below her butt mm -hmm. that used to be bright red. And as she got older, it was stark white. Um, <laughs> she had long fingernails that were either ruby red or ni uh, or, or like lime green. They were mm -hmm. just it was such a thing. And she would wear these very extravagant long moo-moos. And, you know, we'd be shopping in, at the grocery store. And if, if she reached up to the top level, you might see too much that you didn't want to see. But she was like, <laughs> she was the best, man. And, um... And really, you know, yeah, as a kid, I, I thought my parents were sort of crazy for being actors. I, sort of, I used to make fun of them. I, I said, I can't believe you guys make faces for a living uh, <laughs> because they did, that's what they did. But at the same time, you know, people ask me, if, is it weird having actors as parents or mm -hmm. growing up around it? And it, it, it's just as weird as, I mean, what, what did your parents do? Um, my dad was a minister in the United Reformed Church and my mom was a school headmistress. Well, there you go. And to some people, they might be like, God, was it weird having a dad who's a minister? And, yeah. you know, for me, having parents that are actors, it was like, no, because that was all I knew. I just, mm -hmm. I assumed everyone's parents were actors or, you know what I yeah. mean? I just thought, and especially, you know, I moved 15 times before I went to high school. So I was sort of all over the place. But the majority of my, my younger years were spent in LA where I went to school with a bunch of kids who had you know, famous actor parents. I went to school with John Lithgow's son. Nate Lithgow was my good buddy. And, Whoa. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, even like, um, God, the guy from, from Boy Meets World, Ben Savage, he was at my, you know, my middle school. And like, so I just, that was sort of it. It was really until I moved back to Providence, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. you know, 
for high school. And I remember sitting in a cl uh, like a science class when we were visiting the school when I was still eighth, in eighth grade. And one of the girls, a high school girl, walked in and she was like, did you hear? The guy from Wings is walking around the class. And I was like, uh, you know, and the teacher was like, I think that's his son who's visiting the school. So let's not make it awkward. And, introduce <laughs> it. and I just, it was just funny, though, because I, I just, you know, it, it wasn't. It wasn't a big deal for me. It wasn't really a big deal in L.A., but I get – I totally get how it's cool and exciting and the entertainment business and, you know, the, the idea of celebrity is – it's changed our whole society so much, especially over the past 20 years. But yeah. my parents weren't celebs like that. They weren't big tabloid celebs. They were just – they were actors. They could care less. So for me, I grew up – I want, I was 90% sure I was going to be a Los Angeles Laker. I was going to be the new Magic Johnson or Kobe Bryant. Cool. Um, that didn't quite work out the way I wanted to, but uh, we do own an 85-pound golden retriever whose name is Kobe Bryant now, so that's exciting. <laughs> and I did end up playing basketball in college for four years, but – my limitations eventually caught up to me, and I, I wasn't going to go professional. So uh, I, I sort of found acting in college after, you know, d dipping my feet into it a couple times mm -hmm. when I was a kid, but never really pursuing it, never really auditioning it. You know, I did a play because my mom was in a play one summer, and I did a yeah. movie because my dad was directing a movie, and then I went and studied abroad in Prague, and got to write and direct and act in my own movies. And I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, this is, I got credit for this. I can watch my favorite movies and write. This is like, this is easy. And, uh, and it wasn't until then that I really fell madly in love for it. And I've been doing it ever since. Excellent. Excellent. So you didn't really have a pressure then growing up to follow in their footsteps. Was... No, you know, not at all. I was not a kid actor. My parents wanted me to do whatever it was that I wanted to do. They, you know, supported me wholeheartedly. Yeah. So I was really lucky in that. And it's funny now with me having a son who's, you know, under one, he's about to turn one, but he, I, I will say, you know, humbly, he's ridiculously cute. So, <laughs> um, a bunch of friends asking that because we have friends with kids and they're like, well, did you hear so-and-so got an agent? Are you going to get Owen an agent? And I'm like, if I ever got my son an agent, my parents would just disconnect from me completely. <laughs> so, um, so no, I'm not, you know, it, listen, if, if Owen came to me in five years and said, dad, I want to be an actor, I'd like to go audition. Mm -hmm. I, I would be the first one champion him in, it's telling everyone how great he is, but until he says that, I'm not going to be the one who puts it. Unless the only way I would do it is if we were walking through the grocery store and the president of Gerber came and said, we're going to make your son the new Gerber baby right here, right now. <laughs> He'll entire life paid for it. Then, then we can yeah. talk. Other than, that, other than that, we're good for now. Fantastic. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's really cool. It's nice to know that you weren't pressured either. I know when I was, I, I used to love acting when I was a kid. And I did it yeah. all the way through till I was about 18. And I was going to take exams for Lambda, which is you know, the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts, because I had a tutor who said I should go for it because I'd pass. Um, but I was kind of told, I was kind of steered in a different direction. And <laughs> I took, you know, went to, to German instead then, which was a sensible, you know, the little <laughs> bunny ear, sensible career type option. And so I'm kind of finding that now coming back 20 years later because uh, I started doing this and then I started getting in and you know I, I was picking it up again and it's a passion I do believe that you you know allowing people to have the freedom to to follow their own path and their own desires I'm not going to knock anything my parents did because I've had a very you know successful <laughs> career based on, on what I've done and so now I can actually I take that time to go and, and, and revert to the passion and try and you know follow my dreams again and what's what I'm trying to teach my son my 11 year old is exactly the same because he's got he's actually won two awards in filmmaking would you believe hey, <laughs> uh, he did them at school he won one for all the all the kids he's won a Harry Potter um, day so all the, the filmmaking guys from Harry Potter are going to come to speak to the school as, because of what he did and he was Shit, I gotta talk to your son I, to <laughs> I know yeah part. come on I'll audition <laughs> he was in a what do you call it Oh, he's in a Welsh film festival, a youth film festival type, local film festival. He got, he got his film on that beach I just showed you before. He was actually, he, did, he filmed it on there, the marooned, they were crawling through the water and it was good. It was good. <laughs> Great, man. I love that. So, you know, it's like you got to sort of, I'm in the, the family of, 
you know, whatever your kid wants to do, just dive in head first. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the truth is, who knows what they'll like a couple months from now. But it's like until they figure it out on their own, then 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 why not support it? No matter what it is, art, sports, you know, humanities, whatever. Exactly, exactly. He wants to be a marine biologist at the moment, though. So. <laughs> Well, at least he has. At least he doesn't have any ambition, right? You yeah, <laughs> it's actually quite it's weird because I think, if I remember rightly, when I was at his age, it's exactly the same path that I had. I wanted to be a marine biologist at the same age, and the re same reasons why. And it's it's just quite freaky. He's following exactly how I. <laughs> That is crazy. Were you pressured to go into the church at all, or was that, that something that you Oh, no, with? nothing at all. It was um, yeah. exactly like you said with yours. It was just something, you know, my dad was... Uh, he passed away in 2009, and obviously, after, he was a very nurturing, very kind. Obviously, you know, he, he did his yeah. ministerial duties very well, and but he never ever pressured or anything like that. Um, obviously, he used to go to church every Sunday now, and I don't now, which is probably something I, I regret because it's something I, I've not carried on. And you know, it was one of his dying wishes was to to let my son grow up in that area, and we've just time <laughs> society now just you don't. I know it sounds horrible, but you just don't get the time to. Uh, to do things like especially at weekends they're so busy and it's it's an excuse i guess but it's you know you just it's crazy it's crazy yeah, i couldn't agree more man i took my son to, to toys r us this weekend to get him an early birthday present and that was like who knew i could have had the best time ever just going to toys r us and walking <laughs> around and grabbing stuff off the, the, the racks for him to play with you know oh yeah oh yeah i, I i've got to admit i think I, I look into their toys r us as well probably more than he does yeah. <laughs> get all the action figures out wow <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I, I, almost, I almost walked out there with like a month's, month's worth of mortgage worth of stuff so I had to it down a little bit but. excellent I mean you've also mentioned as well there um, Sam is you know with, with the, the immensely talented family that you come from from an acting side of things you know I mean you You've, been, you've also been in the same shows as well there um, like not obviously at the same time like Madame Secretary uh, you have obviously the Daily Show, obviously Grey's Anatomy and things like that. Has that like become a talking point with the fact that you know because you guys are all mixing in? Are you? I mean, with my my family, not. It's like I, you know, my family is very close. Um, you know, my parents they they are divorced. They got divorced a few years ago, but we probably have one of the most they have one of the most amicable divorces. I would say we still spend holidays together. There's still a lot of love there. Mm -hmm. You know, we all spend. Christmases and, and, and Thanksgiving still together. But, um, you know, working together, it's like people say, like, what are the challenges and hard parts uh, of working together and what are the good parts? And I say, well, the good part is is that we're working and that we get to do it together. We, we love each other. We're a very tight-knit family. And mm -hmm. that's like, one of the, you know, I, I, I love my family and getting to, to work with them and do something we all love to, together is such a blessing and so fun. You know, the hard thing is like, it's it's finding out where we're gonna go for dinner. It's like everyone has their own opinion, everyone wants their own delicious food, everyone has their own agenda. But really, it's not. There's there's no real challenge to it. It's it's you know it would the challenge would be deciding what time to leave to go to, to set together because someone would want to get there early, someone would get yeah. it right on time, someone would want to get late. But but no, it's it's really been it's so much fun and I think you know as as sort of shocked as my parents were at least when I told them I was going to be an actor because uh -huh. they just didn't expect it and they yeah. didn't really know I think that they have both not only are they both totally supportive but it's been such a fun journey for them to see me grow as an actor and as a person and uh, in my career and to be able to share in moments with them that you know they probably never expected would happen um, when I was growing up and that really wasn't my my boat so um it's been really great fantastic fantastic question from uh, simon barry brisbois he's actually a canadian listener and watcher of mine very avid fan um so Oops. thank you simon uh, <laughs> he's actually said uh, sort of a throw it in while now because it was one of the questions he'd sent him was D you know did your dad give you any important tips and your mum about acting uh, or preparing yourself for auditions and working you know growing up around them i really got to see a lot of both sort of the ups and the downs and the hard, the good times and the hardships that mm -hmm. go, go along with it. You know, so many people that aren't part of or familiar with the entertainment industry, all they see is award shows, uh, television show, you know, like 
Oscars, Golden Globes, you name it. It's the BAFTAs. It's like they don't see the time and work and effort it puts in. They don't see the 16-hour days, the, you know what I mean, the auditioning, 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 getting rejected, 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 all to make those yeses that much more sweeter. So, yeah. um, you know, and I got to see also – my, my mother does primarily theater, which I, I still have such a big passion for, and I love doing theater. And my mm -hmm. dad does primarily television um, and film. And not my mom's done a bunch of TV and film. My yeah. dad's done theater too. But but really, I got to see through them how much work it takes, and and you know, and also I also got to see that that they're incredibly lucky. They've spent their entire lives acting. I mean it's really hard to be a working actor and, and the work that goes into it. And unlike any other job, it's like, as soon as your job is done, it's not like when you're a fully employed person, you go back, it's Friday and you go back to work on Monday. If the, if the movie ends on Friday, you're, you're unemployed on Monday. You know, yeah. <laughs> if your season finished ending on Friday, you have, have no job until maybe it gets picked up. Maybe it doesn't, maybe you're in line for the next one. Maybe it doesn't. So it's like, Part, it's, and it's part of acting that I love and I think so exciting because you're always moving on to these new stories and these mm -hmm. new characters and to tell these new sort of adventures and tales. But um, but at the same time, it's 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 one of the, the hardships of it is that, uh, you know, the sort of stability, the sort of, um, you know, keeping everything on a steady course. It's my, my wife. She my works at, at Yahoo, she which mm -hmm. is. Now the umbrella company is called Oath. It's owned by Verizon. But yeah. so and she works in sports, which um, I love sports too. And she, uh, but she works, you know, a grueling desk job that you know in tech, which and she is awesome at it. She is the most incredibly hard worker, and she's amazing at her job. And Yahoo Sports. If you do fantasy, I'm gonna plug it right now. You <laughs> don't, don't use anything else. But um. You know, it's interesting because uh, I think from having two parents as actors, I realized that I didn't want to marry an actress. <laughs> not, to say, not to say I didn't date some and, and, mm -hmm. and really enjoyed the ones that I did, but it, uh, the women that I did date that were actresses. But but because Marissa has a completely separate career, I'm like fully supportive and fully, uh, you know, invested in what she does. And I'm learning from her and, and, and how she applies herself to her job. I'm taking sort of elements of that and implementing it into my own career and vice versa. You know, I have someone who she, all she wants is the world for me and to, to, to play the roles that I want to play and to work on the projects I do. And it's been really healthy and awesome to, for, to have that sort of different slice of life come together for me. Fantastic. No, that is great. And um, I've kind of got the best of both worlds myself at the moment. And I know where you're coming from, obviously from a, a smaller point of view. And I've said this, expressed this a few times because it's something that does come across with actors is, Everyone sees, like you say, the BAFTAs. You get all the really good stuff and, and having that, and then you're seeing the low side of things as well. It does. I mean, I get that a lot. For, for every decent actor and interview like I get, like yourself, where I, you know, because I, I thrive for these, because you know, it's just have a great, you know, a lot of fun. There's a hundred where I've, you know, you try and you try and you, and you just get no's or you just and it, I, it. And I think what drives it is a passion. And I think growing up like you did and seeing that. And, and being able to tailor um, the experiences you had when you were growing up, seeing your mum and your dad and your aunt and everything going through that, um, you were able to pa you focus that passion further. And like you say with your wife, with the passion she's got with the tech side and pushing herself as well. If, I think if you've got a passion, you should follow it. And, uh, and I think if you don't have it, then you probably fall by the wayside long ago. Uh, absolutely, especially in this industry because it's like, you know, if you don't have some thick skin and you don't really – the so first thing I say when young actors are like, so what advice do you have? I'm like, if you if you don't love this, if you wouldn't be happy doing a a a, a play in front of t t five people a night, making no money and and, and not loving every single second, then get out, stop, stop before you even start, because you're just going to drive yourself nuts. Because you know, it's too many people, especially young actors, they do it now because they want to be famous, mm -hmm. which is or rich, which yeah. is two things that the majority of actors are not. So it's like, unless you really, really want it with everything in your body and, and will find happiness no matter what you're working on, mm -hmm. then then you can find, there's other things you can do that'll make you happy. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. I think 96, <laughs> there's a very, what's only 5% 
of actors you actually end up seeing on TV and make it into the Hollywood. There's something you know, it's a very small amount. Come, it's true. Uh, which is why I'm a, I'm a huge supporter of independent film as well because I think that's a brilliant medium. You know, I agree. To, to push forward and it, it, you know, obviously it gives actors jobs, <laughs> but it's a, um, a lot of the independents that I speak to. I I love them more than some Hollywood blockbusters because there's much more of a, a close knit feel. You can because it's small, you've got more love in there. People are giving everything they've got into there, and and oh, you yeah. can see that coming through on the camera so much, and it's just it's brilliant. Yeah, my favorite movies are the movies these days that have no CGI in it, zero mm -hmm. CGI. They actually just tell a story. They they get it done. Like my, my favorite movies are what I call like Hollywood Renaissance movies, like mm -hmm. 1970s movies, like The Great Escape, The French Connection, Marathon Man, uh, Chinatown, Amadeus, these old movies that are just these real interesting character pieces with yeah. incredible acting. And, um, and you know, nowadays it's like, listen, superhero movies, I get it, they're fun. You get a big popcorn, you sit in there. But, but now when they're on their fifth and sixth version, it's like a... I've, I can tell you what happens. I bet you, I bet you can, you know. But um, but it's still exciting too, you know. Yeah. I, I I'm excited to see Black Panther, you know. I'm excited to see Wonder Woman, but mm -hmm. but, um, but I bet I know what happens at the end. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, um, there's you know there is there is just a huge difference in it. I mean, there's actually a film. There's two films. One which you might like, actually, if you like those kind of old films. It's called The Remake, which is I've interviewed the director last week, and I'm interviewing her husband who's in it, and also producing. It. And it basically takes you right back to the old rom coms of the '50s and the '60s, and it's, it's it looks very funny in that sort of area. But there's another one. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, what a gorgeous. Oh, what breed is she? He is He's a Retriever. Yeah, he just got a very short haircut, so he looks like a like a lab almost. But yeah, he's real sweet. <laughs> yeah, he's lovely. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of films. Like I mean, uh, like you say with the passion thing. The, the day I got the Ian McKellen thing, the day after I got invited to be the Q and A, the host for the Q and A at the UK premiere for a film which I'm doing on Friday now um, in London in Soho. So you know it's. <laughs> So it's like you know, for me, that's a huge step up the ladder because, especially some of the people who are going to be there, it's going to be very, very visible and very high up. It's not Hollywood blockbuster. It's a, it's a, but the film's going to go places. This one, so I was so even if it wasn't, I was just so honoured to just to have been asked to do that. You know, the Q and A with the directors. So and and that's where passion gets you. It's hard work and passion. Um, because I work eight hours a day doing IT yep. and then come home and I spend up till midnight sitting there writing you know, talking and writing away and 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 just following this and and it's people like yourself where you do you follow those dreams and you follow those goals it's it's the kind of it inspires me to push on so i can just imagine how many thousands or millions of other people you know hearing what you've got to say inspire them as well yeah and it's you know it's like people don't see you know even this weekend i had a pilot audition on saturday i went in for it was great and then i had a self tape audition for a movie yesterday that i shot with my wife and my, you know that we set up <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, my my wife just did a, a an interview actually, and they said, "What would be the one piece of advice you would have?" And she had this great piece of advice. I think she said, "She said, uh, say yes to things big and small because mm -hmm. you never know what 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 doors will open to it. There's nothing too small or too big. So, but just say yes, and you know, unless it's something that's totally sk sketchy, that gets <laughs> you. opportunities all the time that you never know who you're going to meet or what door it might open mm -hmm. or." know what might come down the line from it um and and it's just important to do so so i think it's great you're doing that oh yeah no exactly and i have to say I, I agreed to this i actually offered to do it and then got accepted and then after that then i found out people i was going to meet and it's because i don't make any money from doing my show whatsoever and i don't care at the moment um, my wife does um, but i don't <laughs> <laughs> but I, this, you're gonna make some big money. I got a good feeling. <laughs> well, there's a lot of pe yeah people like sponsorship and people like that meeting and moving on and you know and it, um, the distributors only because I met a distributor two weeks before I'd attended a premiere as a because I'd interviewed the director and got invited there and it was just networking and that's a, I find that's a huge important part as well. I've networked around and ended up with the distributor saying he'd love to work with me on all these future releases and I'm and people there knew who I was. I'd never even met them. That's so, so cool. and it was just like you know they all knew me from a giggle apparently, um, 
which I was oh, quite found disconcerting. But they said, no, no, it's positive. I know, right? You're like, wait, what is? It? Are you making fun of me? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like I don't know. Yeah, I, I, a bit self conscious. I don't know whether you really are. <laughs> But it's, it's but it is it's definitely follow that and um, it, like you say you were always busy as an actor you've, there's so much in the background that you're doing uh, an actress friend of mine who was interviewed the other week she turned around and she said something that was really profound and I'm guessing from the fact that you spent the weekend doing things as well uh, she said what she always thinks to herself every day what have I done today to make myself better and to better myself and better where I want to be it's it's so true you know it's like uh, I, I still do stuff like i right, right now i'm working on a new shakespeare monologue and why am i doing a shakespeare play anytime soon no not at all just just to sort of have it though to mm -hmm. have it in my mind in my body a different character something i could recall memory if someone ever asked me to recite a shakespeare monologue i can do it it's like but it's like any any profession you have, you know, I always revert back to basketball because I love basketball. But yeah. like, you know, you think that Kobe Bryant would have become Kobe Bryant if he didn't take a thousand jump shots every day. It's like these actors aren't becoming the actors that they are from just sitting around and hoping for an audition or hoping to get hired. They're putting in the work. They're working on their mind, their body, their soul. You know, it's like they, it's you're tapping into all these different emotional resources that you have. But it's like anything else. If you're not constantly sharpening that axe, you're never going to be able to chop that tree down because, you know, that's that's the whole that's the whole key to it. Exactly, exactly. Sorry, you mentioned the Shakespeare monologue. Then I was thinking, I've done, I, for some reason I've got Peter Sellers now in my mind doing it's a hard day's night. It's been a hard day's night. And I've been working like a lot. <laughs> I've got that in my head now. <laughs> I was just thinking, what kind of monologues could you do? And that, 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 that for some reason, Peter Sell is doing it's a hard day's night in the style of Richard III. <laughs> just came straight to mind. That is so funny. His, uh, it's a classic, that really was. <laughs> he is such a great actor, man. Him as, uh, as Chance... Chance the Gardener, Chauncey Gardner is just one of the best movies of all time. <laughs> yeah, it was Peter Sellers, bless him. He's a he's someone troubled very much with there. Uh, again, you find a lot of comedians get troubled with serious depression as well, don't they? Which you don't. <laughs> yeah, it's com com now comedian is something like I love doing comedy, but being a stand-up comedian is a whole nother beast. That even I'm like just walking into a room full of strangers with the expectation to make them laugh is it's a monumental undertaking you know? it is it is it's uh, one i couldn't even fathom <laughs> not at all um, i mean you have got as well sam you've got your own impressive array of credits with an imdb uh, <laughs> well my, my research there <laughs> Uh, one of the ones which stands out, there's quite a few which stand out, obviously. One of the ones which stands out is one which is The Office. Now, the, obviously the American version of The Office, because we watched the Ricky Gervais, but the American one's just as funny. How did you find working with Steve Carell? Because talking about comedy and comics, he's got to be up there. He's one of my favourites at the moment. Yeah, I mean, without questions, it's crazy now to think that it was you know, almost eight years ago. It's it a long time ago, yeah. yeah. But it was, you know, at the time when I was on it, it was season six, Steve Carell was on it. It was probably, you know, if not at the height, just about to be the absolute height of the office and its popularity in, the, in America. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it was the only show that I've ever been on that I was a super fan of. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? I'd seen every single episode of it. My roommates and I went to watch it every week. Uh, you know, we recorded it and we had little parties for it and I'll never forget when I, when I booked the role, I, I had auditioned for this tiny little co-star and it turned into this recurring role of Oscar's potential love interest, the gay warehouse yeah. guy. Um, but it was so amazing to walk on the set because I, I, I felt like I knew where everyone sat and where all the rooms were and, and where it all went and, you know, um, just being around those actors, they were so kind and inviting and warm. And, you know, I sort of had something in common with them being from the East coast. Cause a lot yeah. of them were actually like new England guys. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, they were all really just sweet to me and I really enjoyed my time. And I'll never forget, you know, 
Steve was so funny and so incredible at improv on set. But one, <laughs> one thing that was funny about the set was out of ev every show I've ever been on, and this happens more often in comedy than not, but they usually keep the, the stages pretty cold. Mm -hmm. uh, and the stage of the office, the office had its own sound stage that it shot on out in Van Nuys that right. was just the office. And it was so cold. That, that the actors would have like down parkas and heaters underneath their seats. <laughs> and the reason was that Steve Carell liked to keep it freezing cold, not only because he, you know, it's, it's sort of a, it's an ongoing theme that people, people believe that that comedy is funnier when it's cold because people mm -hmm. are a lot, yep. but also just because I think Steve was a big sweater. So, so to avoid <laughs> sweating, they kept it at Arctic temperatures so that everyone would be on their toes and everyone everyone would be present. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, well, that's a good reason, you know, if you want to put that on. <laughs> I'd rather not be sweating when I'm filming yeah, too. So, exactly, so. yeah, you know, especially since it comes across on the camera so easily. Mm. I definitely you can really see those sweaties. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most challenging role that you've had? God, you know, I've, I've had a handful. I did this film, Black Road, which is on Netflix mm -hmm. and iTunes. But um, I shot it at the, uh, the end of 2014 up in uh, Ashland, Oregon, which is southern Oregon, this beautiful town. They're known for having the biggest Shakespeare festival in the in the United States oh, okay. uh, called o OSF, Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Mm -hmm. But uh, But there are a bunch of fantastic filmmakers there who are sort of either – uh, have have relocated from Los Angeles or New York because there's a really good quality of life and Oregon is just stunning gorgeous. But yeah. this film, Black Road, where I play a half-human, half-cyborg, uh, it's like a sci-fi, futuristic, noir thriller that we made for $100,000 in Oregon. Okay. Uh, I learned to ride a motorcycle for it. I um, And I'm in almost every single frame of this movie – but one of the other lead characters is this chip that I input in the back of my head and his name is Clyde and we have full on conversations together. But so for a third of the movie, like the first two weeks of shooting, mm -hmm. I was having conversations with myself um, <laughs> and had no other actor to go off except the person reading off camera. Yeah, it was it, it was the most um, challenging and and sort of. Uh, you know, it was very educational for me, and, and mm -hmm. I learned so much from doing it, but it was really hard and, and interesting and unique just, just having that experience and really, you know, I remember finally when I got to act with another actor, I was like, well, this is weird. Like, why are you <laughs> don't look at me? You know, yeah. why is else in my shot? This is me. Um, but but from it, I grew a lot, and I really uh, I was really happy with the way the movie turned out. So fantastic! I can imagine that is quite hard when you haven't got anyone apart to play off, and you you know you just end up talking. Yeah, that's got to be. It was bizarre, man. <laughs> and and and, the, and it was really it was the director who was reading the lines off camera. So when we went to record, the guy who actually did the voice, who's played by Andrew Wilson, mm -hmm. who Owen and Luke Wilson's other brother, right. Uh, <laughs> who was great and is fantastic, but we recorded it all after picture had been locked after, you know, yeah. months after we had finished shooting. So it was, it was sort of bizarre to go and revisit and to sort of see myself in that, that way. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Okay. From moving on from your challenge, what's been the most funniest thing that's happened on the set? On set. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do one from Madam secretary. Cause this was just so funny, but my mm -hmm. first episode of Madam secretary, I had this whole scene with Jeffrey Aaron who is just one of my favorite actors and people to, to, to work with. He's so great. And, you know, I, I knew Jeff before Madam Secretary. He is has a big role in this sort of, uh, you know, very folk hero stoner comedy called Super Troopers. Mm -hmm. um, he licks the window when he's he's tripping on mushrooms <laughs> in the scene, and he says the snozberries take, taste like snozberries. That's like his funniest thing. <laughs> but, so we get to set, and now it's like a very serious political drama that takes place in the State House. Yeah. And my character, Wynn Barrington, is this waspy medical marijuana lobbyist, mm -hmm. and he's, he's having an affair with my then fiance. And so he's freaking out because he thinks I'm there to bust his balls, but really I'm just trying to get a video of him saying how much he likes my fiance that I'm making for her birthday. Yeah. So to calm him down, we all ate pot gum um, on the show. <laughs> uh, 
fake Pacum in real life, but on the show, we ate Pacum, and it was it was just we just had such a fun time and mm-hmm. fun, fun surreal scene doing it together. We we really had some good laughs. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Can imagine it. So yeah, just picturing them licking the windows and stuff. Now. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. And, and good thing I, I got to, you know, I really went method and rehearsed that in college for a long time. So that was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect, perfect method acting. Well in advance. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> anything for the craft. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Are you going to be recurring again with Madam Secretary? Obviously, you've just been on there. Do you think you'll be coming? Yeah, so there is there is there is a lots of discussion of Wynne Barrington coming back, especially because Daisy now has a child and she doesn't have someone to raise uh, the baby with so right, I'm hoping okay. not only maybe will will win come to, back to 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 help her raise the kid but also with marijuana being so in the mainstream politics now it's like I, I can see them easily drumming up a storyline that involves that in some way shape or form oh fantastic that'd be a nice uh, good good arching storyline for you as well to 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 get into exactly cool and what other projects do you have at the moment coming up I mean I believe you're going to be Marcus Gant in Office Uprising, is it? Which is a zombie horror spoof. It's an Office Uprising zombie action horror comedy. It's, it, Chris, it's funny, man. I mean, these <laughs> guys, Brenton Thwaites, Karin Sony, Kurt Fuller, these guys are just laugh out loud mm-hmm. fun. My character, I play a, an absolutely just horrible person. I, the exact opposite of me in real life because I don't consider myself a horrible person. But he's he's the kind of guy you just love to hate. He's uh-huh. just he says everything really friendly, but the things he says are just unrepeatable. Um, <laughs> but he gets what's coming to him too, so that's Fair. good. And you know the the action sequences in it too. The director Lynn Oding. He has a new movie that just came out starring Jason Momoa called Braven, which is, I mean, he comes from a world of action and stunts. That, yeah. um, and, and I just had never been on a set where I'd seen so many people fly through walls <laughs> and a flamethrower being shot and pigs exploding. And I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was unlike anything I've ever done, but that was really great. And I just wrapped a film called Cutthroat City in, uh, in, December, okay. um, star that is directed by the RZA of the Wu Tang Clan, who's a very cool and interesting guy, um, and it stars Wesley Snipes and Ti and Shamik Moore and Demetrius Ship, a bunch of really great talent, um, yeah. and it's like a post Katrina heist crime drama thriller. And I play this cop named uh, Brendan O'Malley, a nice Irish cop from New Orleans. Um, so that was really exciting, and then. Coming up, my, my dad and I are actually doing our first movie together this this spring, um, okay. which we're really looking forward to. We've been developing that for, for a couple of years now. Um, and it has elements of The Daily Show, but it's not The Daily Show. Right. We do play father and son in it, uh, and it's called Just Not Right. Mm-hmm. It's about a father that gets engaged to his son's ex-girlfriend, which is just <laughs> not right. Uh, uh, that's weird. <laughs> but, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> But, you know, if anyone could do it, I guess it would be my pops. He's like Benjamin Button. He only gets younger and younger. So, <laughs> Excellent. That sounds actually quite funny. So I'll, I'll keep we'll keep an eye out for that one as well. Uh, do. I know something else that I've picked up, which was an interesting fact. I was like, oh, when I found out, was the fact that you, about you and your dad, is that you were the only father and son to have both played Superman, the voice of Superman. That is, is true. You know, it's crazy. My dad did it for a while when – when sort of when I was growing up and I never really realized the, I just never realized how cool or awesome it was. I sort of, it was, it wasn't until I got a little older and then I started like, you know, buying some cartoons or a video game that had Superman in it. And I realized it was my dad's voice as Superman. So my friends and I would spend hours just injuring Superman so we could hear my dad be in pain. But <laughs> When I got asked to do it, it was such an honor and it was such an amazing experience going in and recording. Mm-hmm. I, rec- I got to record with, in the room, it was me, Ron Perlman, Carrie Elways, wow. Dana Delaney, and C. Thomas Howell. Like some of, you know, yeah. iconic amazing. actors that I've looked up to my whole life. Um, and just being a part of the Superman family has really been something I hold dearly. And of course, Owen, my son, had to be Superman for his first Halloween oh, this year, and I mean, you know, hopefully he'll be a third generation. But <laughs> it's been really fun and really cool. Some of the things we've gotten to do from it, and I've done a handful of uh, of like theme park rides for mm-hmm. it now. Just getting to say that 
you know, I am married. But if I was single, I'd be telling every girl I knew that I was the voice of Superman. So. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Think I would be as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can use it. You can yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Uh, you probably find out on the next question, actually, how bad I would be. Um, so, <laughs> so this is a question that we really, I was leading up to from the beginning. My signature question. Like I right. say, yeah, I say this is all because of a, a Muppeteer who was on my show last year, so it's all his fault. If you could have a Muppet made of your made from your character about your character, what Muppet would it be and why? It could be one that already exists. It could be a mix of them. God, well, you know, all I can think immediately with that, it would have, you know, it would have to be some sort of ginger Muppet just because, <laughs> you know, you can't really see it in this, but I am a ginger. I was born ginger. I got red hair. My son does my mom, my sister, my dad's mom. We're a bunch of big ginger family. So I'm like, right away, I would go to Elmo just because he's sort of Muppetastic. Yeah. Elmo's, is he a Muppet though? Is that count? Is that? Yeah, it does. He's, a, he's Sesame Street but, Muppet. He's the same sort of <laughs> But it would be some sort of some sort of ginger, you know, either either if it's not Elmo specifically, it could be like a Muppet lion or a Muppet like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. That uh -huh. something like that. Those are my Muppet Muppet go tos. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fuzzy Bear. He's he's more brown than ginger, isn't he? Really. Yeah, he's a little he's a little brownish because there's not really a classic ginger Muppet, right? I mean, is there? I don't know. That's something. I don't think there is. I don't, I don't think, think there is. I can't think of one. I can't Janice, think of one. I think... Janice, the female one. The band. Was she? I, I can't yes. remember. Was she blonde or was she ginger? Was she, was I she, don't I know. She, I think she was redhead. Yeah, well, uh, then I'd be Janice. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair. I was going to say, my, um, yeah, this is, this, is my, my, this is how I started my show, doing impressions, and they're not very good, so this is something to make you laugh just before we sort of wrap up. Is um, you got... Oh. you got... Piggy? Piggy, I can't do it now, my voice is gone. <laughs> it's going to be Kermit, so it's er, er, Piggy, er, you need to dance it, Piggy. There you go, that's oh, my that's, little Kermit. Yeah. See, that was absolutely appalling. <laughs> it's overwork, man, what's going on? I'm not going to do Superman anymore. <laughs> and the yo, I think my, the yo going, it's Donald Duck, my son loves these, by the way. Um, Donald sneezed for you, hang on. <laughs> Donald Duck sneezed. <laughs> And Yoda is, when 900 years old, you reach, look as good. You will not. Look at that Yoda. Come on, man. It's not, my throat's gone. I'm going to give that as an excuse. Uh, oh, they're normally better than that. It's like, do or do not. There is no try. I, like, where's my, I should get my agent on this. Get, <laughs> yeah. oh, we're going to get you out to the US before you know it. Yeah, get, get, me, get me voice acting. Get me in Hollywood. <laughs> Do it, man. Brilliant. Do That's it. excellent. So the last question before I stop recording is, what would you like to tell people who are watching and listening? One last thing. Word of advice? Word of wisdom? God, word of joke. wisdom. Take, <laughs> I would say take a deep breath today because deep, someone told me to breathe once and I thought that he was full of it. And I took a deep breath and I said, oh, oh I feel much better now. Um, and besides that, you know, hey, I got I got no word of advice except listen to Chris Gordon's Hellblazer because it's a great great show and it's it's Thank the you. number one most important show you need to listen to and uh, and thanks for having me man. <laughs>